In this learning module, we're going to take a look at jQuery and how to integrate jQuery with our Spring Boot application in Timeleaf. And we're going to see how to use an autocomplete to give a user a better user experience in our application. We're going to see how to differentiate between what a user sees and what a user types in and what we get in the back end. In other words, let's take a look at the finished product. So this is the front page that we're, that we're accustomed to using. I'm going to show you a couple things. So let me put in a latitude of 20.00 and a longitude of 90.01. We'll make that a negative 9001, just something that we will remember. And I'm going to choose a plant name. I'll take a look as I start typing a name. I could choose something like Daisy, D-A-S. And you see, as I start typing, it starts to filter down this list of possible suggestions. So we can say, well, I'll tell you what, let's do, I saw a T-A-T-A, -A, uh, there we go, a uh, Tatarian Daisy. And you see as I'm typing, it's filtering down the list to something that matches what I'm typing. So I'm going to go ahead and select an item from a list. And you see it's Aster Tartaricus, I'm guessing that's what that is. Just remember a few of these values. Now I choose Submit. And I go back and I'm going to take a look now at our just one moment, I'm going to take a look at our database. And we'll simply refresh this table here. And if we look towards the bottom, we see uh, Acer Tartaricus, Jindai, Jindai, Tartarican, Tartarian, Tartarian Daisy. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing at least some of that. Incredible pink color, you see the latitude of 20 and the longitude of minus 9001. Now, a lot of that probably is not a surprise, but here's the big objective. Notice that we're getting the plant ID of 1559 automatically. You didn't see that anywhere on this user interface, but it was selected when the user typed in this data. It's selected and it's that primary key for this plant. As a matter of fact, we'll just remember that's 1559. And then I'll go to plant places. And let's see if we have a plant. I'll search on any plant. We'll go ahead and choose the Tartari uh, Tartarian Daisy, just like so, and search, and click. And now when I click on it, note this unique identifier that shows across the top, this 1559. So what we're able to do is we're able to take a feed, a JSON feed of data. We show the user what the user understands, which is the, in this case, the English name and the Latin name of the plant. And then we take this ID in the back end and we save that to our database so we can use a true foreign key relationship from the specimen table to the plants table. Now we don't yet have a plants table. We're getting our plants via a JSON feed and maybe that's good enough. But nonetheless, we don't have all of the redundancy of having to repeat the plant name in this plant name column. As a matter of fact, we can get rid of this plant name column. So to do this takes several steps. And we'll go through each of those steps in the videos for this sequence. So first, we take a look at data list, which is a new HTML element in HTML5 that allows us to do a lot of autocomplete behavior. I wanted a bit more functionality though. Specifically, I wanted to be able to get that foreign key under the covers. So we start to look at how to integrate jQuery, which is, if you haven't seen it before, a really nice JavaScript library that we can use to make our pages more dynamic and uh, faster to respond to the user, so an easier user interface. So we start with a very simple uh, autocomplete where we just have a static list of suggestions in our HTML page. From that, we go to a dynamic autocomplete, which is where we have Spring Boot provide a JSON feed of data to our jQuery and says, hey, this is the list of terms that I want you to use as suggestions. Incidentally, our Spring Boot application is getting the data from another source via JSON as well. So there's a bit of transformation involved there. Then we see how we can maintain the data in memory so we don't have to go out and fetch new data every time the user presses a key. Obviously, that would create a lag that's not ideal. We want to be very responsive. iOS user interface guidelines suggest that if we're doing an autocomplete, it should be with local data. So we're not quite there yet, but we are finding how to make this more efficient by storing it in memory. Then finally, we see how we can have a label, which is what the user sees and which is the filter text. 
and also have a separate value. And the value is that foreign key, the number, the unique identifier, and we end up storing that behind the scenes in the hidden field, and then we submit that across to, uh, we submit that across to our server, and then our server can persist that using our CRUD repository straight into our database. All works completely up and down, very clean, very nice. So that's a look at the learning module. Of course, take a look at the Blackboard calendar for due dates. We have a couple that are approaching, and as usual, the quiz and the quiz question suggestions. Now the scrum board, this is a kind of interesting story. I ended up getting a little bit of head of schedule here because the last time we went through some database stuff that only took about one lecture to do, one week to do. So when that happens, sometimes we can have like a hackathon week where we go in and we just kind of go off a developer wish list of these are all the things I would like to do to clean up the application. So I did not get to the next story that's on our scrum board yet, the add a photo to a specimen. That's coming likely in the coming week. But that's going to be a whole lesson of its own, and I really kind of wanted to tidy this up. So I don't really have a lot to do to update on the Scrum board. What I could do is I could take some of these look and feel stories and say, okay, I'm going to move that back in progress because of th something I thought I could do to clean it up. But we did get to completion on that, so I would move that straight back to done. So a few of these stories were complete, and we just figured out ways to make them even better so they'll remain in the done column. So that's a look at the learning module this week. It's going to be a fun one because we're integrating client-side JavaScript framework with the server-side Spring Boot framework, and we're looking at a lot of the glue and a lot of the connectivity that happens between the two. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.